Well, welcome to the old classic car channel. Now, I did mention in a previous video that there was a new arrival, and here it is. It is, we'll have a closer look in a minute so you can see it properly, but it is a 1947 Dodge half ton pickup truck. Now, uh, long termers on the old classic car forum may just remember this because many, many years ago, in about 2014, I think it was, I actually photographed Big Dodge, which is a three ton 1940 Dodge truck with this slightly younger, slightly smaller brother. Um, that was on the Cheshire run and I took Big Dodge out and parked it alongside this and took a number of photographs. And uh, that's how long I've known this particular truck. Uh, friends of mine bought this in 2013 and I've known and loved it ever since. Ever since I first saw it, I thought, what a cracking old truck that is. And I thought, one day, sooner or later, I'll try and buy it in order that it can live in the garage alongside Big Dodge. So Big and little Dodge. There is a new Little Dodge. Now people who have been on the channel for a little while will remember that Little Dodge was a 1924 Dodge Tourer which sadly went to a new home in 2022 after 10 years of being with us. But we weren't Little Dodgeless for long because here we've got this little half ton truck. This is the reason that with slightly heavy heart, I must admit, I decided to sell the MGB development car and the little 410 van. A, to raise the money in order to buy this, um, and B, to make space under cover in the garage to accommodate it alongside Big Dodge. So that is the reason why, as I mentioned in the previous video, I let those two vehicles go, because I so wanted to buy this. I mean, you know, I wasn't expecting it to come on the market anytime soon, but I thought if I don't buy it, someone else will do because this is a wonderfully original, super original, unwelded, unmolested, original, just post war American truck. So let's go and have a quick look around it and just see what it is about this particular truck above all others that really, really appeals to me. And indeed, the young man behind the camera there, because he's a big fan of this one as well. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we go. So here is the little half ton truck. Now, if I just come and stand over here, we can just talk about it a little bit more. So if you've seen Big Dodge, you'll know that the wings are a lot wider. The wings are out here, and there's like an infill panel, and the headlights are set in much closer alongside the grill. So the family resemblance is obviously clear, but there are actually so many differences. If we go and stand along here, you get an overall view of what the old girl looks like. Like I say, most of the paint is original. It has had a little bit of matted off blue paint just blown on the wings here and there, on the back and on the front, but very, very little. It's mainly super original, but importantly, it hasn't been welded. Let me just have a quick walk around and then we'll have a closer look and see why it's just such a well-preserved example. You know, finding these trucks in this condition is just so hard now. Most of them have been hot-rodded or they're just full of plates welded into them. They've got silly wheels or silly engines, that kind of thing. But this one is just beautiful and because we love patina vehicles here at OCC HQ and always have done, like I say, when the opportunity presented itself to buy this, I couldn't really turn it down. I was very sad to see the MG go and the little van, but I hope you'll agree that it wasn't in vain letting them go in order to enable us to buy this super old pickup truck. Like I say, in places you can see where the paint's been polished through, worn through. A little bit of surface rust here and there, but we don't worry about that. Now we'll give it the boiled linseed oil treatment one day when the weather's nice and warm. Again, on the bonnet and on the scuttle in front of the windscreen, you can see where the paint's been worn through. It's nice and warm, actually. But no, no rot through. Often the screen surrounds rot through around here. That's a common place for these to rot when these trucks, because so often trucks just get parked outside. But this one has had a very, very charmed life, I think. Lovely spot lamp here. So this is adjustable, the mobile light spotlight. I think Harley's going to demonstrate this. Can you switch it on? Can you find the switch? I'm not quite sure where the switch is. Nice. I'm not quite sure. I can move it. Yeah, does it move? Yeah. Searchlight. Yeah. It does, it does switch on, I will find the switch after. But yeah, so if we work our way around, wings, all proper edges, no, 
no filler or anything around here. A couple of dings here and there, really good running boards again, that's a sign of a good truck. One that hasn't been had too hard a life because often the running boards get bashed about and they're rotted and so on. Rear mud guards are also good, lots of nice old patina on the wings there. You can see the original paint here. The boards in the back were replaced, the wood has been replaced with Kerouin. This was a few years ago when my friends had it and uh, it's the original strips and replacement wood, hard wood. So that just wants oiling up. I mean obviously it runs and drives but it's very much, it's a rolling restoration, it's had a lot of work done to it. But there are jobs still to do, it needs some new wing, the stuff that goes between the, the wing and the panel there. Could do with those, the screens probably want changing sometime. But I mean they've been like that for years so I'm not going to worry too much about that. There is some interior trim that needs doing. We'll have a proper look inside in a minute. But it hasn't seen, even though it's had a fair bit of work done to it, it hasn't seen much use over the last few years. So really, the plan for 2023 is to just sort of do quite a few trips out in it, longer and longer distances, and just sort of let everything bed down a bit. I know all the brakes were rebuilt. Someone in America, I think, lifted it up with forklift, and that bent the prop shaft. So the prop shaft have to be rebuilt. I think it's a completely new prop shaft, and the diff... There was a problem with differential, so it's actually got a 50s, I'm not sure, Dodge or Plymouth saloon differential. It had to be modified, but that's now fitted within the original axle casing. So the result of that is it's just raised the gearing up a little bit and just makes it that little bit more usable. And it rolls along, I mean, 40 mile an hour, it's no, no effort at all. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm not going to be racing it. Um, so that was, that's a good mod. So it's had plenty of work done. But there's still, there's still jobs to do, and like anything like this, it's a rolling restoration. Every old vehicle, as I've said before, is a restoration project. There's just different levels of work. But in all the important places, I mean, often the tailgates are bashed to pieces. This one's in really good nick. The side panels are good, totally original again. Straight down the sides, not all bashed about. These aren't full of filler, it's all... Proper metal, no fiberglass, all good round here, you know, all down the bottom here where you'd expect it all to rot away. The bottom of the cab corners, old pickup trucks, these always rot out on Chevys, Fords, Dodges and so on. But these parts are just wonderful, look how straight the bottom of the doors are, there's no rot bubbling through. We'll open this, the doors shut really, just push it, those close beautifully, as you can see. When it was brand new, it was this original dark blue here. And it was obviously painted very early on in its life and that's just sort of weathered in really nicely now. And again, you can see where some of the original paint was just where it's worn through and it's just showing itself. I think the seat has been retrimmed. I forget now. But there's some new trim to put in here. The headlining needs a headlining. The boot line, uh, what do you call it? The uh, glove box liner needs doing. But the dashboard is very similar to that in Big Dodge. Now this is called, this has what's called the half waterfall rate, uh, grill uh, dashboard, sorry, in so much as these ribbed bars here, they go just part way down and then it's plain. But on the 39, 40 and possibly 41s, those ribbed section goes all the way down the dashboard. So that's another differentiator between early production, what they call the job rated Dodges, those are built between 39 and 47. That's the difference between the early and the late examples. But, I mean, there's, it's still got the original California plates on it. These are dated, these were put on in 1963. So it's just, it's just a lovely old thing. The engine, it's had a reconditioned engine in it at some point. I think it's a Plymouth car engine. Again, probably 1950s or thereabouts. I haven't looked up the numbers, but I think it's had a reconditioned engine in it. But it's just, it's the quietest six-cylinder engine I've ever heard. I think it's about 3.8 litres, something like that. And again, this side, all the door posts are really good. No rot, you know, where they'd always, you'd always expect them to go there. And the sill steps and all this kind of thing. It's just wonderful. And how about this for a heater? A Mopar Deluxe. Tractor going past. 
an old tractor. all sorts of old vehicles around here so where was I right yeah so these are the original there's the plate bud they produced a lot of the metalwork that went into trucks of this era they also do the big steel wheels um, this company bud you can see you can see that there but yeah it's really nice in here it's three speed gearbox so the gear positions are the same as in the Anglia so first is down and left second is up and right and then third top is where top gear normally is Right, so let's pop the bonnet up and have a quick look at the engine. Right, okay, there's the bonnet raised. So there's the big six cylinder side valve engine. Like I say, it was a replacement engine at some point. Don't know when. There is a plate on the other side detailing the name of the company that actually did it. But yeah, again, it's super original. These are the pipes that go off to that heater unit, that original Mopar heater unit. Lovely and warm. I think I'll just keep my hand there. There's the hooter. And as on Big Dodge, it's got the original, still on 6 volts this is, um, it's the original coil there. And these, I'm not sure if you can actually see it, they're base mounted onto the bulkhead. And they have armoured cabling that goes from the bottom of there, where the uh, connection is, through to the key. Um, so I think that was like a security, um, just an idea for security, something like that. Uh, but it's all still original. And that's what marks this out from so many trucks, it hasn't been got at. So it's still got a six cylinder side valve engine, three speed gearbox. Like I say, it's got a slightly taller back axle in it, which just makes it more usable. So that's a very worthwhile mod. But importantly, no rot. So again, this side, all dead straight, all proper. All this is original, original tin work from Detroit. Little hole there just so you can get out the, uh, the spring hanger for the greasing. But yeah, just, it's just exactly as you'd want to find an old truck. I'm not quite sure why I've ended up with Dodges really, but um, ever since finding Big Dodge at Donington Park all the way back in 1995 and then subsequently having it restored, um, we just seemed to find ourselves being drawn to American vehicles. We had... No, 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 no. No, I mean there was a Model AA truck which we never actually got back on the road. But also the, the appeal of this one was it doesn't need too much work doing, it just needs continual improvements and a bit of use I think that's the that's what it really wants and it is a little bit smaller than Big Dodge so we can take this one out a little bit more often so the Big Dodge is high days and holidays but this one is a sort of thing that we can just jump in and use and we hope to use this at several shows and just local runs out whenever we can because it's just a really usable and super duper quiet engine absolutely wonderful engine you just won't believe how quiet it is I'll fire it up in a minute and you can see for yourself we're just starting to lose the light a little bit, but we've still got the original Dodge hubcaps. You've driven this one, haven't you? You've driven it up and down the drive. That is one quiet engine. When you've got a side valve engine that's this quiet, you know that touch wood and all being well, it's in very healthy shape. Again, that's another reason why this cracking old half ton pickup truck appealed so, so much. And the fact that I've known it for nearly 10 years as well. And I'm sort of familiar with Dodges. I know my way around them a little bit now after many, many years, 27 or 28 years nearly of owning Big Dodge. Oh, we've got some side light action. I'm sure we can find the switch for this little spot lamp on the... Yeah, Have you found it? There we go. We'll give it a bit of action. So this is the kind of thing if you were driving along unlit roads at night, you'd use this to sort of pick out, I don't know, sort of uh, street signs, that kind of thing that weren't lit up. And again, everything's six volt, the original six volt electrics. <laughs> That's just fantastic.
I'm going to put the headlamps on the main, pull it out another go. There we go. Got a few period tools already set up for it and allocated to it. This old toolbox belonged to a chap and his dad built it. It was the first thing he made when he took up a carpentry apprenticeship in the 1920s, this box. Um, so I thought this was a perfect place to put it. We've got a few old tools in there. Old foot pump, an old Dunlop Junior foot pump. And a big old uh, bottle of jack there. more tools over in that Almo box over there and a good old jerry can just in case the fuel gauge isn't 100 percent accurate the previous owner he actually built and made a new fuel tank for it so that's what's in there now <laughs> yeah anyway that's just a quick introduction to our newly bought half ton 1947 dodge pickup truck um i know some people were, dis were disappointed that the mgb had to go and the little van but the truth is that while the MGB was fairly close to being on the road the little van the little 4D 83W van was going to be a quite a lot of work anyway there we go we're starting to lose the light a little bit so I think we'll just go for a bit of a trundle around now and head back home I just wanted to do a quick video while we've got a nice day because it's been raining and windy and stormy and horrible lately so uh, today just seemed like a really good opportunity to come out for a little bit of a meander around the lanes and just talk a little bit about this Dodge and all being well we'll have it at a few shows later this year. Imagine you're in California in 1947. Actually, the gears are really good. The synchrotron is still good. You can even change down, slow down the corners. It's surprisingly how well it drives. It's on fairly narrow radial tyres. They look old style, uh, but they are actually radials. And it actually drives way better than I thought it would. It's like driving big dogs, a big truck on a slightly smaller scale. A lot of it feels very familiar, all this dashboard is the same as in big trucks, like I say, apart from the full waterfall dashboard in the big one. So let's just go for a cruise and listen to that six cylinder engine purring away.
Now for the obligatory test drive. Anyway, there we go, little and large, big dodge, the new little dodge. As you can see, they're obviously related, but the three ton sits a lot higher, it's a lot wider, it's a lot butcher. The half ton pickup by comparison, it's just a little bit more compact, but there's no doubting what family they come from. Harley skillfully backed this in actually, it's quite a, it's a little bit of a tight fit, there's plenty of room, but you do have to get it quite expert in clutch control yeah yeah it's all good practice for clutch control steering so he backed it in while I directed him um, yeah oh, nice work young man Thank you. yeah there they are matching pair together I often wondered yeah yeah it's lots and lots of turns from lot to lot <laughs> but yeah I often wondered all those years ago nearly 10 years ago 2013 um, I wondered if these two would ever share a garage and uh, so it has come to pass Anyway, like I said, we're just going to try and do a few regular trips with it. Same with the little Renault at the back there, of course, the 4CV, which I talked about in the previous video, but I will do a more thorough video about fairly soon. Yeah, so the plan, yes, so, so the plan is to exercise both this and the Renault on a fairly regular basis, as soon as, mainly when the weather gets better. Uh, but when we get nice days like this, which... It's all quite pleasant, you have to grab your opportunities, so uh, yeah, we'll take these out and we'll put them into a few shows this year, get a few miles under their wheels, because um, I don't think either of them has seen much use in recent years, certainly the Dodge hasn't, and I don't think the Renault has seen much use at all. Um, so there we go, hopefully we'll see it at a few shows, and if, if you see it, if you see us with either of these two at shows, please come and say hello. Anyway, that's just a quick update and an intro to the 1947 half-ton Dodge pickup. And there'll be more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.